Sean Kelly reviews Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny from July 2nd, 2023. The famed archaeologist goes on one last adventure in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. On the date of his retirement in 1969, Indiana Jones, played by Harrison Ford, is reunited with his goddaughter Helena Shaw, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, for the first time in nearly two decades. Shaw is looking for information about Archimedes' dial, a relic recovered by her father Basil, played by Toby Jones, during the Second World War. Also interested in the dial is Nazi-turned-NASA scientist Jürgen Voller, played by Mads Mikkelsen, who wants to use the dial's supposed ability to detect fissures in time to change the outcome of World War II. When Voller gets a hold of half of the dial that he had in possession, Indiana Jones reluctantly joins Helena to search for the second half. Jones is assisted in this adventure by his old ally Sala, played by John Reese Davis, and Spanish diver Ronaldo, played by Antonio Banderas. It becomes the literal race against time as Voller is attempting to acquire the second half. In the Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny synopsis. More than four decades after Raiders of the Lost Ark and 15 years after Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indiana Jones returns for a fifth and final adventure with James Mangold of Logan and Ford, Ford and Fer- e. Ferrari taking over duties from Steven Spielberg, who remains on board as an executive producer. The film begins with a prologue set in 1944, where Indiana Jones and fellow archaeologist Basil Shaw attempt to retrieve the lance of Longinus from a Nazi plunder train commanded by Colonel Weber, played by Thomas Kretschmann. It is here where Indiana Jones first comes in contact with Jürgen Baller and his obsession with Archimedes' dial, which Jones and Basil recover. Twenty-five years later, a much more grizzled Indiana Jones has stepped away from adventuring and is about to retire from his role as an archaeology professor. However, Jones is dragged back into action when his goddaughter Helena shows up, stealing Archimedes' dial, and CIA agent Mason, played by Charlotte Renee Wilson, makes it appear that Jones was responsible for both the theft and the collateral damage caused by the very trigger-happy henchman Clever, played by Boyd Holbrook. Despite discovering that Helena and her child accomplice Teddy Kumar, played by Ethan Isidore, are criminals interested in selling the dial on the black market, Indiana Jones reluctantly helps them find the second half of the dial before it is acquired by Voller. My thoughts on Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. In addition to featuring a plot that partially involves time travel, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a film that is literally fighting against time as Harrison Ford becomes too old to believably resume the role of Indiana Jones. While the film takes place only 33 years after the 1936 setting of Raiders of Lost Ark, as opposed to the real-world chronology of 42 years, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny still take the nearly 81-year-old Harrison Ford's age into account for what is being reported to be his final time playing Indiana Jones. While there is much debate surrounding which films in the Indiana Jones franchise are the best or worst, with uh, 2008's King of the Crystal Skull, in my opinion, being unfairly lumped in the latter, I will say that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a film that firmly settles in the middle. This is a completely fine film in the franchise, which can neither be described as the best or worst. Frankly, I would say that enjoyment of this film is probably dependent on how much nostalgia you have for the other four films in the franchise. Arguably, I would say that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny peaks in the film's opening prologue. While there can be just criticism about using digital de-aging to make Harrison Ford look like he did four decades ago, the prologue is the section that feels the most like an Indiana Jones film. When the action switches to 1969, there is something about the film that feels too modern. However, that can be read as part of the point, as Indiana Jones the Dial of Destiny, as by this point, time has passed for adventures like Indiana Jones. Harrison Ford is joined in the cast by uh, Phoebe Walter Bridge of Fleabag and Solo a Star Wars Story, as Indiana Jones' goddaughter Helena Shaw, who turns out to be a character who straddles the line between Ally and antagonist, as Helena reveals herself to be a bit of a grifter who is more interested about seeing artifacts on the black market. The film also features a sadly quite brief appearance by Antonio Banderas as Jones's old diving friend Ronaldo. 
The film also features a few returning legacy characters, including John Reese davis making his return as former Egyptian digger Salah, now living in the United States with Jones. Finally, Mads Mikkelsen ends up being quite solid as the villain Jürgen Baller, which marks the return of Nazis as the primary Indiana Jones antagonist. While Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a film that arguably arrives way after the franchise's expiry date, it still doesn't end up being a terrible film. However, despite making for a fine matinee, this film definitely confirms that it's time for the Indiana Jones franchise to end. I give the film three and a half stars.